Hello and welcome to my latest video on Neon. Now the last video covered uh, a lot of the changes within 1.13 in the particle engine but the video went on a little bit too long and I thought it would be best to cover some of the uh, other features in a separate video. So that's what I'm doing here today. Now many of these new features are a result of the particle engine which uh, again I went over in the last video so I'm not going to repeat that again today but uh, I'd like to go over some of these new features and how to use them. In particular I want to go over the ability to uh, turn on scrubbing now uh, on the timeline. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to uh, construct tails for samples uh, and we also have the ability to extract parts of samples uh, using the particle engine. So let's begin. Now the first thing I want to uh, go over today is recording in standalone mode. Now many people use Neon in standalone mode as a way of importing and um, editing files but they don't necessarily want to record in standalone mode. Now because uh, Neon is an AUV3 plugin and not really a standalone app, uh, by the nature of how the audio is routed, um, by default the microphone uh, and the audio would be uh, constantly running, which means if you leave the app running you could, you could even uh, run down your battery. So I've removed the recording functionality. Now for those of you that want to use recording in standalone mode, you can get that feature back by simply long pressing on the crop button. And uh, when you do this, you'll get a dialogue appear uh, telling you that record has been enabled. And you can see that the record button is now available on the top toolbar. And when we exit and rerun uh, the app, it remembers that setting. Now that's useful. Uh, it means you can use the app and not be constantly pulling uh, power or draining the battery when you accidentally leave the app open in the background. Now the first of these features that's been made available from the addition of, of the particle engine uh, is the ability to scrub a timeline. Now looking at a waveform like this it's difficult to know exactly what's going on without actually playing the waveform. Now this is where scrubbing comes in, and scrubbing is just simply the case of dragging the cursor across the timeline. And you'll notice here, although I'm dragging the cursor, we're, we're hearing nothing. Uh, and this is because um, we need to enable scrubbing, and we do this uh, from the uh, settings menu. So if you click on the menu, and then click settings, and then you just turn on scrubbing. Now once enabled you can simply drag the cursor across the timeline to hear what's going on at that particular point. And we can also do scrubbing during playback mode. Uh, so if we're playing something we can stop and drag the cursor. And you'll see that um, Playback uh, pauses temporarily and then resumes. So notice if we drag the cursor during play mode, uh, the uh, the audio never stops. If I hold the cursor still, we're always hearing audio at that point on the timeline. So the next thing I want to look at is the ability to uh, extract samples using the particle engine. I'll briefly go over this very quickly. Uh, we have a sample here and uh, if I turn on the particle engine you'll see as I drag my cursor around uh, we get tones when we go over various uh, sections of this audio file. So say I want to convert that into one single continuous sample 
we can simply come into the um, the particle engine options and find some settings that we think sound the best and I hit the extract button at the bottom of the dialog that will then prompt us for the number of seconds to create and voila we have our standalone sample and now when we have that sample we can do any uh, necessary editing we like including fades and such like uh, and we can use that elsewhere in uh, in a mix so here's a slightly different example using more of an organ like sound One other possibility is to actually, within the uh, the uh, particle options dialog, uh, turn on the uh, key envelope and uh, the key tracking, and we could use any uh, incoming MIDI to uh, transpose the sound we have with the particle engine. So let's try one last vocal uh, example. Something. As you can see, it's a very, very nice way of extracting tones and drones from audio. So the next thing I want to talk about is the ability to extract parts of samples, uh, maybe after slicing and reconstruct the tail, the sample tail. Now we've got a, a little loop here, which I'm about to play to you. Now that little loop is straight out of Funky Drummer and I like that snare. I want to grab that snare. So the best thing to do is to uh, drag a selection that encompasses everything that we're going to need and crop that. Now if we look closely at what I've cropped there, there looks to be a bit of an imperfection in the centre of that sample. And if we play that back, you'll hear that it's a very, very quiet uh, closed hat. So I probably want to crop that out uh, when I construct the tail on this sample. Now the idea behind this is to uh, select a part of that sample we, that we want to use to reconstruct a tail. So if I make a selection, uh, we have a start point and end point on the selection. Everything up to the start point of the sample uh, is left as is. And everything that is part of that selection becomes the tail. So now we have a selection, press the uh, operations button and then select create tail from that toolbar. Now here we get to pick the length of the tail and I pick 500 milliseconds and I picked percussive. Now we can easily undo what we've done and then try some different selections. And let's just try one a little bit longer, one second long, pushing our look a bit. Now it might be that the sample is uh, something of a non-percussive nature. Uh, I have this uh, sample here, it's a vocal sample. And I'm just going to be looking for a part to extract. And I must admit, I quite like that part. So we make the selection and we uh, crop that out. Now it's quite an abrupt ending on that. So let's attempt to construct a sample tail. Now the first thing to notice here is that I have not selected the first part, anything in the first part of the sample because I want that left as is. I also haven't gone up to the end of the sample because it's a cut off and we don't want any corrupt part of that sample, that cut off, to appear in this con reconstruction. So in this case I'm going to pick uh, instrument rather than percussive. Now if you notice, that didn't sound too great, so I'm going to try again, but this time I'm going to try it with the uh, vocal profile, which uses a different algorithm which is more favourable to voice. I want to go over something now that I don't think I've documented before, but most people that have used Neon for a, a, a little while will probably have seen a number of unsaved files appear 
in the media bay and uh, I keep getting asked what are they and the simple answer is that you've dragged and dropped uh, a file to the edit ed editor and you've exited Neon without saving it. Now the default behavior is to uh, attempt to save any of this before exiting so that you don't lose your work. Now you can turn this feature off. Now if we look in settings and we look uh, at the save on exit, it's currently on my machine it's turned off. But uh, if, if, you, if you see this turned on, turn it off. But be warned, you won't get your unsafe files, but also you'll lose any work that you do not save. Now, if you want to delete these unsaved files, there is an easy way of doing it. Which, and the simple way is just to tap and hold on the delete button. And then when this tidy uh, folder uh, dialog appears, just say yes. And all of those uh, unsaved files will be deleted. Now before I finish this video, I want to have a look at something that's going to appear in the next version 1.14. Uh, this is crossfading loops. Now I have a loop here, if we audition this loop, you can see it doesn't loop perfectly. Now in order to create a seamless loop out of this, we have to sacrifice a certain number of beats or or bars uh, in order to get that loop to uh, crossfade perfectly. Now we can see here it's three bars long and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the operations button and then hit the crossfade icon. Now we'll be presented with a dialog that allows us to choose how many beats to crossfade and I'm going to go with a default of four. Now when I press apply uh, and we take a look at that you'll see that we've lost those four beats off that sample but what it's done is it's created a perfect loop so basically those beats we chose to sacrifice have been used to create a seamless start and end uh, for that loop now that works great for kind of string choir and ambient background kind of sounds probably not so good on drums so that's just about it for this video uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so. Uh, don't forget to thumb up this video and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.